What is up, everyone? Welcome into another edition of our NBA DFS DraftKings Picks videos, this time for Wednesday, November 17th. I am your host, Justin Bales, and we have a significantly larger than uh, normal slate over the last few nights, I guess, uh, of an 11-game slate for Wednesday night. Generally, it seems like the NBA is pretty much just putting on the massive slates on Wednesday. We usually have solid Friday and Monday slates as well, with Thursday and Tuesday kind of being the lesser. I believe uh, this Thursday is a little bit bigger than the two to three that they've been putting out. And the next week on Thursday um, for Thanksgiving, we don't have any games at all, I don't believe. But uh, an 11 game slate tonight. We have a ridiculous amount of injury news, which I will go over shortly. The last time we were on here, um, I asked how many real-life points Spencer Dinwiddie would have. He then lit it up with 27. Nobody got it correct. Uh, someone did say 29, which actually was a real, really good guess uh, for what he dropped in that game. But um, moving on to tonight, let's go with someone that's kind of weird, that's going to be a little bit more difficult Luka Doncic is out for the next few games. Um, so let's go with how many real life points will Jalen Brunson have? Obviously, he's going to take over a little bit larger of a role in the offense. We'll get into that as we go position by position. But he has scored 17 points, act, like actually 17 points in three of his last four. On the season, he has anywhere from four points, he scored that a few games ago against Denver, to 31, which he dropped against the San Antonio Spurs a few games back as well. So essentially, it has been all over the place. I wouldn't predict roughly four. Um, you know, his, his role is going to be much larger and he gets a solid matchup against the Phoenix Suns. So drop in the comments below how many points you believe Jalen Brunson will have on this slate. If you enjoy the video as well, please go ahead and give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of our future content. Uh, if you turn on the notifications, it will send you a little notification every time a video is posted to make sure that you're completely up to date with everything we do. I know that Joey and Ethan have been posting um, props videos as well, which it's definitely important at that point. Uh, for the props to get them as early as possible. So that's the type of video that really the notifications is going to help you that much more with. This video you can kind of watch, you know, throughout the day whenever you really want. Um, and it's not going to change that much because you just need to watch it before the sleep. But the videos that uh, Ethan and Joey put out, the videos that Taylor puts out, uh, those are all much more time sensitive and why you would turn on the notifications. And then as always, I will answer any uh, questions or comments you guys have. Just drop them below as well. Throughout the day, I will answer it. As we continue to go through these massive slates, I'm going to try to be a bit more clear cut, a bit more decisive on specific players. There are a lot of players that can be used in basically every position in multiple price ranges. So I'm going to try to be a little more decisive in who I outline here, which means there will be players that I do like that I think are good plays that will not get outlined. If you have any questions about those players or anyone that I don't say, if you want to know a little bit more about them or anything, by all means, please just drop their name in the comments uh, or ask the question that you actually have or anything. And I will try to outline them the best that I possibly can. As for now, though, I think we can shift into the injury news. There is a ridiculous amount going on. Um, we're, at, we're a few weeks into the season, so injuries are starting to pile up a little more. People are getting rest days. Uh, people are questionable. It Obviously, some injury is going to change the slate, especially if people that aren't on, even on the injury uh, list are ruled out, which has consistently happened. I think that's one of the major reasons to get into our Discord, where we're consistently talking about that type of thing, and that is chatdfs.com, or the link to that will be in the description below. Just click the little show more, and you can find it there completely free to get in, or we do have premium channels which come with our core plays package along with you know projections, you get our core plays, all, all that good stuff as well, which can be found at dfscarmet.com. That is also where you can find all of our free articles uh, and everything of that sort. So for the injury news, starting with um, Indiana and Detroit, Chris Durate is the only real guy that we need to be talking about here. He is questionable after missing Indiana's last game. 
Bradley Beal will return tonight. Uh, meanwhile, Davis Bertans and Rui Hachimori are continuing to be out for quite some time. P.J. Washington will miss at least one more game. Jalen Brown for Boston out once again tonight. Robert Williams also questionable on the other side of that game. Bogdan Bogdanovich and Kevin Huerter are both questionable for Atlanta. So that could open up some more minutes, obviously, at shooting guard, small forward, uh, because DeAndre Hunter is also out for quite some time as well. Etwan Moore out for Orlando. Jalen Suggs is questionable. He missed their last game. Uh, questionable tonight. Nerlens Noel has already been ruled out for New York. Evan Mobley is going to miss quite a bit of time. But also for Cleveland, Lamar Stevens, Laurie Markkinen, and Jared Allen have all been ruled out. Kevin Love has been uh, placed as probable, so he should get quite a few minutes because they basically don't have anyone else. For Brooklyn, uh, Nick Claxton will at least have the potential to play tonight. He kind of returned to the team from a, an illness a few games ago, but he has yet to play because of um, his conditioning issues but he could return tonight. Paul Millsap still injured. Joe Harris is going to miss a few more games as well. For Los Angeles, LeBron James out once again tonight. On the other side of that game, Brooke Lopez has already been ruled out. Bam Adebayo, Jimmy Butler, Dwayne Dedman, all questionable for Miami, while Markeith Morris has already been ruled out. Kevin Porter is questionable for uh, the Houston Rockets. Eric Gordon is off of the injury report. He's expected to join the team once again after missing last game. Naz Reed and Josh Okoge, both questionable for Minnesota. As I said before, Luka Doncic out, Maxi Kleber out, Frank Kaminsky is now questionable for Phoenix, but obviously a significantly lesser role with DeAndre Ayton back. Um, he returned last game. Then for Chicago, uh, Nikola Vucevic is out for a few more games at least. Javante Green is questionable tonight. And on the other side, Damian Lillard and Norman Powell, both questionable for the Portland Blazers. So we have a, quite a bit to get through. I mean... That's a lot of questionable players, and obviously depending on who does what, um, who's in, who's out, there's stuff that's going to change by game time. Again, that's why I think it's so important to get in our Discord where we're kind of more talking about it in a real-time type basis versus uh, a podcast recorded the night before. Not that this isn't valuable. Um, there's still going to be plenty that I say in this podcast that's going to make sense. As more chalk uh, starts hitting based on players being ruled out and stuff, it could take some of the players that I say tonight and uh, give them a little bit lesser of ownership, which could be very advantageous to uh, tournaments just because there are going to be players that I say tonight that are really good plays at the moment. And then as other players become chalkier, uh, they become... Um, Great. Essentially, they become great tournament options solely for the fact that they didn't become any lesser of plays. They're still great plays, but they just aren't the focal point anymore just because of the way that the slate has gone. We've seen that happen uh, plenty of times where someone should be super high owned. Other people get ruled out. People move to a different game. And then the guy that was supposed to be high owned uh, all of a sudden came with extremely low ownership and uh, realistically, in that type of situation, that's always someone that you can attack, at least in um, tournaments. So position by position, again, I'm going to try to keep this relatively concise. I don't want to outline a ton of people uh, and let you guys know that there's uh, you know, a ridiculous amount of guys that I'm willing to play, even though you know, there are a lot more than I will be saying that will make my player pool, depending on how my lineup construction goes then. But again, drop those names in the comments. If there's anyone that you want to know about, I'll let you know uh, exactly how I feel about them. At the top of point guard, there aren't too many players that actually stick out. Not a lot that I necessarily love here. Uh, one of the players that I do like, I feel like strictly tournaments, um, because I, I do believe that at his current price, he is overpriced. Um, it, it's LaMelo Ball. His upside is through the roof. He's averaging over 50 fantasy points per game at home this season, and he gets a solid matchup against the Washington Wizards. The problem is they're actually playing significantly better defensively than most would expect uh, this season. They've looked really good as a team. But at the same time, 
LaMelo Ball just comes with a ton of rebound potential for a point guard, a ton of assist potential. He can score uh, extremely well, especially when he's deciding to shoot the ball. So I do think that he's in play. The problem, obviously, the 10-7 price tag will keep him for GPPs only for me. But I do think that he is completely in play, um, e even for the price, just not in cash games. As you move down more, uh, there's a few players that do stick out. One that I definitely would want to mention, um, and, and it depends a little bit on injury. But Cole Anthony makes a really good option, specifically if Jalen Suggs is out again. He's coming off of a 53 fantasy point game. He's actually just had a, an extremely great uh, breakout season at this point, averaging over 20 points per game, six uh, rebounds, five assists. It's just a really, really good season for him at this point. And with Jalen Suggs out, he's taking on a little bit larger of a role. 29 points, 11 assists in his last game. Gets a matchup against the New York Knicks, who he's already played twice this season, and he's averaging nearly 45 fantasy points uh, per game against them. He's also been significantly better on the road this season. So Cole Anthony is someone for the price that I would be willing to play. Now, you're kind of going to have to make decisions here. Uh, I think, obviously, if you're looking more at cash games, if everyone's out, you know, Kyle Lowry it would obviously be interesting. You have, like, C.J. McCollum if uh, Damian Lillard's out. So there's going to be decisions made at essentially all price ranges. Um, but Cole Anthony is a player that does stick out to me. I do think that he's in a really good spot, and I wouldn't mind playing him. As you move down more, the very obvious uh, play, his price is up because he's been playing extremely well, but now he's taking on a larger role in the offense, or we would at least expect him to. Jalen Brunson at 5,700 should be chalky. There's not really any reason unless something weird happens, people get ruled out, uh, that you wouldn't be playing him at 5,700. So I do think that Brunson is probably the cash game option at point guard and then with joe harris out last night patty mills drew the start uh, the game before that he played 31 minutes scored almost 40 fantasy points he's so reliant on scoring but he gets a matchup against the cleveland cavaliers who obviously are without quite a few bigs their defense is going to take a hit uh, colin sexton's not playing for them as well so just a lot of backups and i do think that patty mills at 3500 could become popular and realistically should be popular. Um, assuming he's in the starting lineup again, uh, he started last night, so I would kind of just assume that they do that once again, especially in this type of matchup against a team that really doesn't have many bigs at the moment, at least any healthy bigs. Moving to shooting guard, I think one of the sneakier plays at this point would probably be Brandon Ingram. He's 8,600, which is a little bit cheaper than his... Um, essentially the price that he's topped out. I think he's topped out at 8,800 on the season. He, his minutes are trending up since returning from injury. He got to 32 in his last game, and now he gets a matchup against the Miami, um, the Miami Heat. The big problem here, essentially, is if Jimmy Butler plays, I probably don't want too much Ingram. It's all, almost completely based on Jimmy Butler being out. And the sole reason for that is Butler probably guards Ingram, and we obviously know how savvy of a defender that he is. So I think if Butler's out, you can look towards Brandon Ingram, and I wouldn't expect him to garner too much ownership just because of the type of game that it is. People don't really like attacking the Heat, even though obviously if Butler and specifically Bam Adebayo, who protects the rim extremely well, are both out, their defense takes just a massive hit. And Brandon Ingram's the type of player that really can take advantage of that. Moving down more, uh, you guys are probably sick of me pointing to him at, at this point, but as long as Jalen Brown is out, Dennis Schroeder uh, makes a really good option, especially sitting at only 6,500. I know he's coming off of a bad game against Cleveland, um, but gets a matchup against the Atlanta Hawks. I'm not overly concerned with the matchup. He's running point. He, he scored 53 fantasy points only three games ago. You know, We know that the upside's there. He's willing to take a ton of shots if he has to, which I don't necessarily expect him to have to, but he's w one of the focal points of the offense. So I do think that Schroeder is really good at, at 6,500. I don't have 
really many concerns whatsoever with him. As you continue down, um, no, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna skip over someone there. Uh, there there's a guy that I'll probably outline at small forward, but I'll move down to Lou Dort, who is just playing absurdly well for the Oklahoma City Thunder. He actually has a surprising role in the offense. One of the big things about him is that his shot selection is essentially exactly what you would want out of someone that you expect to score. He's taking, I believe it's over 90% of his shots uh, at the rim or uh, behind the three-point line. I think it actually might be over 95% of his shots are in the paint or behind the three-point line. So that's exactly what you want. He's now scored 20-plus real-life points in four consecutive He's still priced under uh, 5000 So the matchup against Houston, really good. We know that their defense struggles. We know that they're a young team that's going to allow points. So Lou Dort, as long as, uh, I guess I was going to say as long as he can keep it up, makes a great play. But realistically, at 4900 he doesn't even need to score the 20-plus points uh, just uh, for the way that he's playing. As you move down more, I will... I guess I'll save another option for small forward there. Uh, one guy that does stick out a little bit, Chetty Osman. The big thing about him is that when he's feeling it, or realistically when he's not feeling it, that dude is going to throw up a ton of threes. He played 31 minutes against Boston. Now Cleveland doesn't really have any bigs, so they're going to go with a smaller lineup. I would expect 30-plus minutes again from Osman. I would say that he's risky um, just because he's so, he is so reliant on his scoring. The problem is he's only 4,000. So as long as he's getting around 30 minutes, he, he's not really that risky because he'll add a few peripheral stats. And then if his shot's falling, he comes with just tremendous upside. Uh, as you saw in his last game where he dropped over 40 for only 4,000, which just a lot of... Uh, a lot of salary relief on on the slate which was the case in the last slate as well you have josh richardson he only played 25 minutes in his last game but still posted 20. Um, I, I mean he could play upwards of 30 tonight and he's only 3300 he's just a really good option once again for a, a super low price tag as we move to small forward this is kind of an interesting spot I don't necessarily know if there's anyone that I want to spend up on. I do think that it's interesting that Zach Levine is now listed as a small forward as well. You can play him at shooting guard or small forward. I think that Miles Bridges is interesting here. He's actually playing power forward, obviously, for the Charlotte Hornets, and I do like the matchup quite a bit against the Washington Wizards. Uh, Bridges has performed extremely well this season. He's kind of, I don't want to say cooled down, in his last few games because I don't necessarily that, that doesn't seem to do it justice of what he's doing but he has scored under 40 fantasy points in three of his last four still 35 plus in all four of them and we've already seen him drop you know close to 60 fantasy points uh, on the season so I do think for 8100 Miles Bridges is a very interesting option uh, especially against the Washington Wizards. I just I just feel like that's a really good uh, matchup for his skill set. As you continue down more, uh, I didn't actually realize that Grayson Allen had gotten up to 6,000. Uh, I think he's viable. That's not someone that I want to outline, that I really want to go over too much. Um, I think you probably drop down a bit more. And the guys that you look at, Talon Horton Tucker, I think it's pretty clear. He played 37 minutes in, in um, Los Angeles' last game. He scored 42 fantasy points. He's going to keep playing minutes, and his price is going to skyrocket, most likely until LeBron comes back. And even after that, you know, he could get plenty of minutes. So telling Horton Tucker, even though he's not the 3,000 easy plug-and-play that he was the last time, 4,800 is still just way too cheap for the way that he's producing. So absolutely no issues whatsoever using him in all leagues. The other guy that I guess I would mention here would be Tim Hardaway Jr. He's another guy that's going to have a larger role on offense without Luka in the lineup. He's coming off of a 35 fantasy point game. He's now scored 30 plus in three of his last four. 
He's pretty reliant on scoring. If his shot isn't falling, he's probably not likely to hit value. Uh, the big thing is I, I do believe that he's going to see a larger role, and the Phoenix Suns do give up quite a few threes. So I think that Tim Hardaway Jr. is viable in all leagues just because he's going to have to do a bit more in the offense tonight um, and, and in the next few games. But uh, he, he does make a very solid option. As you move to power forward, we're at the point where you kind of have to decide what you want to do. Giannis is 12500 It's a relatively ridiculous price tag. We know the pure upsides there, but how much do you want to risk it? How often do you think he can uh, get over uh, over value at, at 12.5? It, it's kind of a risk reward that you need to decide that you're comfortable making. Essentially the same thing for Kevin Durant, who's up at 11,500, even though he hasn't really had uh, that great of a season. I know he's been playing well recently, but he's only passed 55 fantasy points in, I believe, one of his last 10. And even that, he only hit 60, and he played essentially as well as he could in that game. So I don't know. You're, you're kind of going to have to decide what you want to do at this position. Personally, I probably move down a little bit more. Um, not really too many guys that I necessarily love. I do think that Domin Tasta Bonus at 9,200 is going to be valuable. The problem is he doesn't come with the pure upside. Even when he's scoring extremely well, it doesn't seem like he really gets above about 55 fantasy points, which again, 9,200 easily take that. Um, but just compared to some of the other guys' ceilings, it's a, a little questionable, I guess. Moving down, Chris Tapps Porzingis should be popular. He's he scored, uh, what, 40 and a half, 47.75, and then 56.25 in his last three games. He is the quote-unquote star now for Dallas. The offense should essentially run through him. It's going to be hard not to plug uh, Porzingis for 7,400 into your cash game lineups. I think that's you know, a, a very easy play. I think a lot of people are going to make it, and realistically, it does make sense uh, not to avoid him at this point. One guy that I do like is Wendell Carter Jr. More of a tournament option, I, I guess I would say, with not because they're close in price tags necessarily, but when you're looking at DraftKings, only four player or three players below him will be Kevin Love, who should end up being popular. The problem here is that Kevin Love doesn't necessarily have the conditioning. So you kind of have to decide what you believe Cleveland will do. They are without Jared Allen, Evan Mobley. Um, the centers that are on the team, you, you could see Ed Davis uh, get in the game. Taco Fall, I believe, in their last game played eight minutes. Uh, if you think that they're willing to give him big minutes, then okay. But outside of that, essentially the only center would be a small ball lineup where they probably play uh, Isaac Okoro or Dean Wade. I guess Dean Wade would probably play the four uh, with Isaac Okoro at small forward. Then you have your choice, you know, Ricky Rubio, uh, Darius Garland, Chetty Osman, all those guys at the at the one, two, three, um, et cetera. But still, Kevin Love is the more or less small ball four, uh, unless they use Ed Davis or Taco Fall. So kind of an interesting thing. I would assume that Kevin Love's going to project well. I would assume that a lot of people are going to use him. He doesn't even necessarily need 30 plus minutes to hit value at 5,300. So uh, tentatively, I would just assume that Kevin Love is the cash game play. The big thing that could happen would be either one, they rule him out because his conditioning isn't ready, or two, they put him on a strict minutes limit where uh, maybe he only plays 20 minutes. Um, at that point, he's probably not the chalky option anymore. But, you know, uh, still plenty of things could essentially happen. Dorian Finney-Smith uh, is most likely going to benefit from Luka. Essentially, the whole rotation for Dallas is going to benefit. Finney Smith is the guy that I would expect to play You know, 30-plus minutes. So I have no real issues if you want to use uh, someone like that. And then as you move down a little bit more, um, Chimizy Metu is 
He moved into the starting lineup three games ago. Uh, he played 21 and 24, scoring 23 and 23.25 in two of his last three games. Then his last game caught fire early. They gave him 32 minutes. He scored 36 and a half fantasy points. Uh, I mean, I really liked him um, when he played at, what, USC, I believe. And then he, he went to... The pros, uh, people didn't necessarily believe that he was going to play for Sacramento. Now, all of a sudden, he's in the starting lineup. If he's getting 30-plus minutes, I mean, he's always been like around a fantasy point-per-minute type of player. Uh, he's averaging a little over one per minute on the season, and he's 3,800. So realistically, if they drop him back to 20 minutes, uh, even that, there's still value in playing him at only 3,800. So I do believe that that's at least an interesting play. And then um, James Robinson Earl, I, I think, is viable as well at only 3,500, but I prefer Metu to him at this point. As you move to center, you have some of the the higher price guys at power forward as well. You know, Julius Randle, Sabonis, um, Giannis, Anthony Davis. The top pure center is Carl Anthony Towns. Obviously, he always comes with the value. I don't see anyone in Sacramento being able to defend him. They just aren't really big enough. Um, Holmes, not you know the top defensive center in the NFL or anything. So I do think that Carl Anthony Towns is viable. If Bam Adebayo plays, uh, I don't really think that you're even considering Jonas Valanciunas. He's just too expensive, essentially for what he's been doing recently and the fact that uh, Adebayo is arguably the best defensive center in the entire ML, or NBA. If Jimmy Butler's out, Bam Adebayo, very easy play, assuming he's in at 8,200. If Butler plays, I think that Adebayo is in play at 8,200, but not necessarily a lock or anything along those lines. Moving down a bit on the opposite side of Carl Anthony Towns. I do think that Rashawn Holmes is viable. Uh, similar to Holmes, Anthony Towns isn't lighting the world up defensively. And at 6,700, there just is value, uh, especially because you have big double-double potential for Holmes. He also can add quite a few blocks or steals on any given night. I do believe he's very risky. Um, completely questionable as to I guess it's not a question. You're not using him in cash games, um, but you can use him in tournaments. Another guy that I like around this price tag would be DeAndre Ayton. You don't really have to worry about the minutes limit. Uh, 33 in his last game, he dropped 39, and that 6,200 is just too cheap for him. Prior to uh, him getting injured, he was on fire. He dropped 53, or essentially 54, and then 40 in only 24 minutes. 6,200 is way too cheap, and obviously no one for Dallas is really going to slow him down. As you get a little bit cheaper, I think you're kind of clearly looking towards Isaiah Stewart, who, assuming he can stay out of foul trouble, the, the minutes are probably going to be there. Uh, I think he matches up relatively fine with Miles Turner. I liked him against Toronto and Sacramento because both of them had smaller centers. He played 27 and 32 minutes in those two games. I don't necessarily think that he's going to really slow down Miles Turner all that much, but I do think that it's a better matchup than essentially when he played someone like Jared Allen. Um, so I, I do think that Stewart is in play. Not necessarily that I would go there in cash games, uh, but uh, I do think that he's at least viable. And then... I'm going back and forth on Dwight Powell. Uh, I need to just kind of get a feel for what his minutes are going to be. It's more or less questionable as to whether they hand him a bit more minutes to try to make up for some of Luca's size, but I'm not necessarily sure at this point whether I believe that's going to happen or not. One of the other bigger things that you can do is essentially play Jared Vanderbilt if Nas Reed is out. I think he played 24 minutes in his last game, and he's always performed relatively well on a point-per-minute basis, uh, so I don't really have too many issues with that. And then Tony Bradley is the other option, 24 and 27 minutes in his last two games. Hasn't played overly well in those games, but at 3,300, it's going to be really hard for him to burn you. So... Um, 
Once again, you know, as always, I say that I want to keep it very concise. I feel like for an 11 game slate, that actually was a relatively small pool of players because there's a lot more that I could talk about that um, haven't quite made their way or their way up the list that high. But it is still a lot to digest. And, you know, we do have quite a bit of injury news yet. So once again, if you enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Comment below how many points you believe Jalen Brunson will have or any questions, other players you want to know about. I will answer anything that I see prior to uh, lock. Once again, I guess I didn't say it this video, but I've said it in previous videos. Please, the earlier in the day you comment your questions, the more likely I am to get to them because after like the last hour, uh, I'm sitting in Discord answering questions there, uh, trying to make my own lineups, all that good stuff. So dfskarma.com if you need anything until then uh, we should be back thursday uh, tomorrow when you're watching this and good luck tonight